Hello everyone, welcome to another discussion video. Drugi is back with us for this video. So in our last discussion, we talked about life as a security professional and, and giving some insight into the industry as a whole. So this one ties back to that a bit and talks about actually getting a job in security, you know, getting your foot in the door if you don't have that industry experience. So we'll start off with qualifications, talking mostly about formal first. So I'll start off with certificates. It seems certs have always had a place in the industry, but it seems over time they're kind of, would you say they're losing their value or gaining value in terms of like how they're looked at by hiring departments? I would actually say there's a little bit of a gain in value recently ish. What I what I'll say is in the on the offensive side of the industry, certifications haven't really had any stronghold, and they don't really have any stronghold. There is if you're doing government work, there may be some requirements like you've got Crest over in the UK, um, you've got like the DoD accepted certs, um, like CH is often used for that. Uh, in the US, it's some government work. There are some requirements around that, but when it comes down to it. They've never been like widely accepted. And I do think in recent years, you are seeing like OSCP, especially, has some places are looking for it and it has kind of been a little bit more acceptable. I've even said myself that I actually think OSWE, the web application assessment, which is more like a code review thing, is actually kind of a worthwhile test that I might look at and like, you know, see positively if I saw it on a resume. I, never really expecting it it's not a necessity by any means but if you've got nothing else if you know you're aiming for that first foot in the door job like they don't some of them don't hurt some of them still might like still laugh at ceh a lot but i mean if you have nothing else it is sometimes better than nothing so part of the reason i asked that was because in my head when i think of certs they, they've been around for a while now and obviously, the longer that they've been around, the more people are going to have them. So I was thinking with that inflation of more certs being seen, if that's just kind of hand waved and not really looked at as importantly anymore. That's where I was of kind of thinking with that. Require that you kind of do some upkeep to either keep them or they keep changing their version like CEH 11 is coming out. So if you have 10, you're outdated, you're expired. I'm not sure exactly what the expiration policy is there. Oh, no. So, Drew, do you have any certifications? I do. I have the OSCP and the OSCE. And OSCE is definitely expired. Well, not expiring, but they've retired that now. You can't even buy it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think you're, you're right. Um, from my perspective, the only time I've ever spoken to anybody who required a cert was either for government work or for rep model type stuff where a customer or whoever was requiring a CISP or CISSP to do the threat model type work. And we've ran into that where we've had customers where for the people who do advisory services are required to have their CISSP. Um, outside of that, um, I'm unaware of any sort of requirements. Uh, every once in a while, we'll have a customer maybe ask, oh, can we have somebody who has their OSCP? Um, but generally, that's just they don't really know. Like, they just they think that that's a good thing. Um, in in my eyes, I've never laughed at somebody, sir. Like, if they put CEH or something on their resume, I never laughed at it. Um, I've always just kind of seen it as like, okay, cool, like, you you are interested enough in this topic to go get certified, um, but I also don't really add any sort of value for it. Um, yeah, similar I do to... clarify, like, I'm not laughing at the people because they have CH or anything, because there are valid reasons. HR filter, people do ask for that. It is required mm -hmm. at points. Like, there's a valid reason, but the certification itself has generally been viewed as a bit of a joke, just the multiple choice, not all that relevant things like that no 100 uh, so, yeah no, i just I, want I, to clarify I, yeah yeah i wasn't saying you were laughing at people but like yeah uh just kind of in in terms of i've seen that where people are like oh they put that on their resume like that's worthless and it's just like well to me it's it shows something like 
like if you put down you're an eagle scout like that still means something to me regardless of if i care that you know how to tie knots and you went on hikes and stuff it just means that you were dedicated enough to to pull something off and see it to the end right um now the ocp is interesting to me because um when i took it it was because i was on irc and everybody was saying how uh it was this crazy uh search that was very uh hard and advanced and stuff and i and i thought I, I still to this day i think that's kind of funny because the ocp to me is a bare minimum of the knowledge that's expected of you if you're somebody who's billing out and doing network pen testing type work like that should be a bare minimum of knowledge and experience uh to perform yeah, that job it's very much an entry level certification now in fairness i have not done oscp i've only done osce i didn't really because as i said i'm not all that interested on the network side but i think one benefit with oscp is it kind of gives you methodology based so yeah like very basic fundamental stuff but that is something that you kind of get from it that I tell, I've said for a long time, I think OSC is pretty much worthless just because yeah. it's just too much. Like it tries to cover too much. It's in the middle. Like it doesn't get you up to speed on anything. It just teaches you a few different tricks, basically. Whereas OSCP, at least there is the methodology that you gain from it. Yeah, the, the OSCE was a waste of money and a waste of time, 100% in my opinion. The OSCP... I, I think there's value there. And um, in terms of just m giving somebody confidence and that they're doing things correctly and, and they're good at their job, you know, if they went and passed it, like, great. In terms of somebody who's new and trying to gain experience, like you said, they get a methodology. Like, when I see that on somebody's resume, I know that they understand a basic methodology of an internal network pen test. They understand vulnerability scanning and they understand how to take uh, basic known uh, vulnerabilities and with public exploits and exploit them to get shells and pivot through a network and do privilege escalations uh, at a basic level and and write a report at the end. Uh, but once again, at a basic level, right? That doesn't mean that they're going to meet all your standards across the board, but it means that they've done it. So I think there's value in having that. And and uh, I've gone to the point of, of saying... Um, I wouldn't be opposed to just kind of um, anytime we have somebody who wants to do internal network pen tests, uh, just have the company pay for their OSCP cert and have them go take it because there's there's never going to be a negative in them doing it. You know, it's just uh, either extra value or extra confidence or gives a customer confidence or they might learn something new. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And I'd say something similar about OSWE is just being that as a certification, like I didn't find the course all that great, although they've updated the course significantly since I took it only a year and a bit ago. Uh, but the certification itself, like the exam, I found just very good at actually assessing. Can you jump into a code base and start auditing it? Um, and that's a really valuable sp skill when you're working on the application security side of things. So, like, I definitely see that as a positive. It is a fairly new certification, at least in terms of being accessible. It's been around for a while, but uh, they just recently, well, last year, kind of gave it an online version, making it kind of accessible for people to get. Yeah, I don't know anything about that one other than uh, the tidbits that you've told me. I, I should probably go check it out. Yeah, I mean, I... I have obviously a positive review of it in general uh how about degrees do you have a degree i'm actually not sure i do not no. okay so i think uh, i'm the um, only one here then that, that has a computer science degree yeah um, actually i was in community college at the time when i got my job offer with my current employer um because i was at defcon and uh met with them and then interviewed they gave me a job offer and i dropped out of school immediately to take the job yeah so i i mean it's i always like to point out with i have a degree but i got my degree and finished it because i was already working in the industry it just makes as a canadian to work in the u.s it makes it a lot easier for me to get a work permit for that uh, so i didn't get my degree until after 
I was already working in the industry. So after I was already working as a developer and then got into security, then I got a degree for that. It wasn't a requirement for me to get into the industry at all. So I think uh, especially as time has gone on with in regards to degrees, I think they've become less important. Um, at least for getting just as a qualification for getting the job. That being said, I think there are definitely uh, valid reasons to have a degree. One was like you were saying there, you know, it, it makes it easier to get a U.S. work visa than if you don't have a degree because you're you're locked off to a lot of visas if you don't have a degree, unfortunately. Um, the other thing is degrees can help a lot with getting internships. You'll you we've kind of covered it on the Day Zero podcast before, but like some of the 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 Google fuzzing stuff, like the Google fuzzing internship program, a lot of those require degrees, uh, or they require you to be pursuing a degree as a university student. So having a degree or pursuing a de degree does open up a lot more doors for you. That being said, I wouldn't say it's a hard requirement. Like you're not screwed uh, if you don't have a degree. Like I've definitely gotten into some interviews without having one. Yeah, I guess the thing is, like, the hard requirement is, like, you have the skill to do the job. Like, I mean, there are some internships, there are some junior positions, but generally speaking, if you can do the job, you're going to be able to get a job. But if you can't, you're not going to get, there are very few places that are going to offer on-the-job training to actually get you up to speed. Um, and no, that's kind um... of the, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say no. You guys, you guys are right. I've I've never interviewed somebody and and um, kind of took away from them because they did not have a degree. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at least when I'm interviewing somebody, I'm I'm looking for for hard experience, you know. So if they have only the degree but no experience doing, you know, they could have a degree on computer science, but that does not mean that they have experience with security. Um, so really that's what I'm focusing on. Yeah. ComSci maybe gives you like a foundation for learning some of the security, but most programs just aren't even going to be teaching you much about security, um, during the computer science program. That said, there yeah. are the cybersecurity degrees and those I have much less positive feeling about. It's not that like I'm going to knock anybody off for having a gain. I care more just about somebody's skill uh, when it comes to like the hiring. It's can you do the job? Not do you have the qualifications? Because there are so many people that are, were just self-taught. You know, you learn this on your own. Maybe you have some related qualifications, but you learn a lot of this on your own. Yeah, I, I think so. And to be honest, um. I would never tell people to avoid getting a degree or anything like that. Um, no, in my circumstance, um, it just it made sense to me to take the job opportunity that was put in front of me um, instead of trying to grind out school because I had the offer right there to get real experience and I took it, you know? Yeah, um, the experience I think is more valuable. Yeah, um, now I was very junior at that time and i mainly um you know i was self-taught so my knowledge was all over the place of just that only the the areas that i happened to know and uh as i've uh, matured and, and grown um with my just knowledge across the board it's become clear to me that foundations are, are very important especially when you start getting into lower level stuff um when you're when you're working with somebody who has you know a master's in computer science and knows the computer at a very low level and has taken compiler courses and and has this knowledge on hand they're going to be able to pick up the concepts and and the different areas of security way faster because they they have the strong foundation where uh, i myself ended up taking the backward route where I ended up, um, I don't have a degree, but I've taken a lot of uh, online courses, like EDU courses, um, like Coursera and stuff on uh, foundations and compilers and, and things along those lines to to keep uh, learning these this lower level knowledge that is helpful for security, especially in the different areas of focus. 
So I want to jump back a little bit to something you said, Z, with the, you know, not it not being ideal to do on the job training in the perspective of companies. And I, I was just thinking about this when we were talking about COVID a little bit during the last discussion video too, was especially with COVID now, with everything being more remote, you know, re remote work is starting to, companies are starting to transition to allowing more remote work. And that is something that is hard to get as a junior position, right? If you're, if you're a junior, you're not like, you don't have any previous professional experience. Companies don't want to let you work remotely because they want to be able to help you out with some of that on the job training if you need it. So I do wonder now, especially with the circumstances of the world, with the coronavirus and stuff, if it is maybe a little bit harder to break in now where maybe companies are looking for more experienced people more so than they were before because of that, you know, remote as aspect now. Well, to some extent, it's just less hiring because security is at least a bit of a cost center. Um, it's, as I've referred to, a negative deliverable. Doing security right, you're preventing something from happening rather than actually providing something necessarily directly of value. Um, I mean, you could call the report, you know, it's it's an actual deliverable and all that. Like, there, there are positive aspects to it. But generally speaking, a lot of places are going to be seeing it as a cost of security rather than a money maker except for like the consultancies who are billing people out and making money off of it but all the places they're billing it out to are um coming back at it as a cost so there's just kind of the less hiring but i do think companies are kind of making some adapt to how they work in general so i i don't know if i'd agree but i'm also not really involved with the hiring at this point so i can't really make any strong statements on that. I can at least um, state that on my side, it would be difficult to hire somebody um, that's more junior and trying to train them up purely remotely when they're at home um, during this time. It, it's uh, far different when you can have them in an office sitting next to you and and shadowing over your shoulder and and asking questions instead of just kind of being blind on on chat or or like a, a voice only so yeah i've actually been shadowed kind of remotely before and it it just doesn't work very well i mean maybe yeah. some company can kind of figure it out but i definitely had a negative experience with that um, so although I did want to, sorry, jump back just on the degrees. Uh, with cybersecurity degrees, I kind of started a thought and didn't finish it. With cybersecurity degrees, I would generally just recommend people avoid them right now because there's no standardization behind what you're actually being taught in a cybersecurity degree. Um, it could be a like really solid computer science degree with some security tossed on there, but I've also seen a security degree that was a business degree with a couple information assurance courses. Uh, so like very different and like somebody just looking at your resume doesn't know what was actually included with that cybersecurity, unless you've got something like it's a NSA Center of Academic Excellence. Um, they have a few different programs. If it's like one of the cyber operator programs, you know it's a good CS program. Um, so like there are some ways to kind of give a tell, but it is... It is a problem because there's a lot of places just trying to do a cash grab on a cybersecurity degree. So we'll wrap it up there with talking about what kind of qualifications you need with uh, getting a job in security. We'll be back in two weeks' time with another discussion video. We can You can also check out our podcast on Mondays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. And we will see you guys in the next discussion video.